back in December and started to pray and, and look at what the sermon schedule might look like for now, and, and little did I know in December that I would be standing here today preaching a sermon um, from a passage where Jesus healed a lady who was sick in the bed after myself <laughs> being sick in the bed last week. And so I have a, a fresh, you could say a fresh experience uh, that gives me a little bit of insight maybe uh, to, to, to this passage in the scripture. So we've been here in, in the first chapter of Mark the last few weeks and we've been pondering this question, which is the title of the sermon series, who is this Jesus? And what we've seen as we've gone through this chapter of Mark is that that Jesus came to be one who fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, to be the Messiah, that he came and he called plain old fishermen to come and follow him, that they might learn how to fish not for fish, but to fish for people. And and last week, Brother Johnson, I appreciate him following along the the series and and, and picking up there with this passage in, in Mark, where last week we saw that Jesus came and spoke with authority. And there was authority in his, in his teaching. And, and today as we are here in this passage, we, we see that not only is there authority in Jesus' teaching, in his word, but there is authority in his, in his touch. Authority in his touch. You know, as I reflect on this passage and where, where Jesus raises... Simon Peter's mother, up out of the bed with a fever. I'm struck by where he touched her. Did, do you see that? You see that? Look, look with me. Look with me. And in verse, in verse 20, in verse 30. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. They told him about her at once. In verse 31, he came and took her by the hand took her by the hand and lifted her up. Now we see later on in this, in this passage down in verse 40 that a leper came to Jesus. And look in verse 41. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. He touched him. He, he broke the law. <laughs> you see, the, the law was that anyone who was filled with leprosy was untouchable. You weren't supposed to touch someone who had leprosy because it was, it was unclean. It was contagious. Just like I was contagious last week. And I was quarantined. <laughs> to, and any time Katie would come and go from the room, a cloud of Lysol would, would, follow, <laughs> would follow her out. Because <laughs> we, we know the danger of germs, right? And you're not... You're not supposed to touch, and you're supposed to wash and, and use antibacteria to, to kill all the, all the bugs and viruses. We know now what they didn't know then, but they realized that there was something powerful, something that happened whenever there was a touch. And by my count, as best I can tell, in the chapter of Mark, including these, these examples, there are at least eight times in the Gospel of Mark, where Jesus healed others through touch. You might be reminded, one of the most notable examples is in Mark 5, where the woman who had the, the issue of blood, where she was, had, had the issue of blood, and she came and she reached out and she touched him. She touched him. She broke through the crowd and she touched Jesus, and immediately, Scripture says, she was healed. And Jesus turned around and stopped. Somebody touched me. And the disciples said, what are you talking about, Jesus? Everybody touched you. You're, you're surrounded by a lot of people. Jesus said, no, somebody touched me, and healing went through. Healing virtue left me and healed someone. And then all throughout Scripture, we, we see where crowds followed Jesus, and as they followed him, they were looking to just simply touch him, knowing that even if they just touched the clothes that he wears, they, they would find that the healing that he needs. That they needed. The point is this: the point that I really want you to understand today. If you don't hear anything else, I want you to know this. We worship a God who can be touched. We 
worship a God who can be touched. And not only that, the God that we worship came that we might be touched, that he might touch us. That is, that is the most profound truth to me. As I, as I think about what, what God came to do in our lives and who Jesus is, Jesus is the one who heals us. Do you know his touch today? Has Jesus touched you in a way that has changed? Because let me tell you something. When the touch of Jesus finds you, it changes everything. And I want to suggest three things today. First of all, the touch of Jesus lifts us up and restores us. And that's your blank if you're taking notes. Just like when Jesus reached down and, and grabbed Simon's mother-in-law by the hand and raised her up, he goes on to say immediately she was healed and she went back to doing her work. <laughs> she, she, she went back to serving them and preparing the meal for them. It was, it was an instantaneous thing. The point is that Whenever Jesus heals, there, there's a sense of, of authority. And, and it restores, and just as she was restored, the touch of Jesus in our lives restores all of us, our, our, whole, our whole being. Secondly, the touch of Jesus draws attention. It draws attention. So what, what happened after this incident? At sunset... Says. And what's important there is that you might recall that, so what we see here in, in Mark is, is a day in the life of Jesus, and it was a Sabbath day, right? So he was, he was teaching on the Sabbath. So at sunset, that would have been the end of Sabbath, which by law permitted people now to be able to, to bring sick people, okay? So, it, so, so at sunset, at the end of the Sabbath, they brought people who were sick to Jesus, can you imagine what, what kind of scene that would have been? They brought him to the door of, of this house, and it just says, the whole city was gathered there, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out demons. It's amazing. Wherever Jesus went, it drew attention. It drew, it drew attention, and we, we see that as... As Jesus goes on, that all as crowds are continuing to follow him, word has gotten out. Word has gotten out. And it, it's interesting, too, to note that if you look in verse 34, you see that Jesus would not permit the demons to speak. And then later on down in Mark, after, after he heals the leper, in verse 44, he said to, to this person that was healed, See that you say nothing to anyone. Say you say nothing to anyone. So it was not Jesus' intention for word to get out. But have you ever had something so good happen to you, you just have to tell somebody? Anybody that experienced Jesus had something so good happen to them, they had to tell somebody. And friends, that's, that's what God desires in our lives. Well, whenever, whenever God does something in your life, don't keep it a secret. Tell others this good news about what Jesus has done. Thirdly, the touch of Jesus leads us to follow Jesus. The touch of Jesus leads us to follow Jesus. It's important to point out here that after that there are two scenes here, and in the middle of these, these scenes, where we find Jesus, he's praying. So after he leaves Simon's house, early in that morning, he gets up and he goes, he goes to a place, and what is he doing? He's praying. And then the, the disciples wake up, and everybody's looking for him. And they, they go and they find Jesus, and they, they tell him, everyone is searching for you. Well, now here's something that's interesting to me. He answered and said, let us go on to the neighboring towns. Let's go on to the next town. So Jesus didn't say, okay, let's, let's go back where everybody's looking for me. But no. He said, we've got to go on. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? I want to suggest that he said that because God had a mission for Jesus. And that mission was to go in through all the world and to proclaim this message 
And you see, there were, there were two, two, two types of people that we see in Scripture that encountered Jesus. That there were those who were looking for their needs to be met. That they were looking for a show. They were looking for, for the, I've heard somebody describe it, the magic man. Right? That they were looking for someone, that they wanted to see the spectacle. And then they, they came searching for that. But they, after, after seeing that, they went, they went on with their lives to the next thing. But then there were those, then there were those who, who seeing the miracles of Jesus, said, there's something special about this, this man. I want to follow him. I want to commit my life to him. You see, whenever we encounter the touch of Jesus, we're faced with a decision. Are, 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 we, are we really looking for, for Jesus, or are we just looking for our own need to be met? You know, I came across a song this week as I, I got in the car and I turned the radio on and I had this, this sermon on my mind and was praying about what to share with you and, and, I, and I just sensed that the Holy Spirit just put this song on the radio for me at just the right time to share with you. This is a song by Nat- Natalie Grant. The song is called More Than Anything. And listen to these words. Help me want the healer more than the healing. Help me want the Savior more than the saving. Help me want the giver more than the giving. You see, see the point, friend, is this. That God invites us into a relationship with him. And as much as Jesus came to bring us healing, more than that, Jesus came to give us a relationship. Jesus came to, that we might be in a relationship with him. And I want to share that song with you this morning. I brought it with me, and I want to, I want to play this song now and, and let, you, let you hear these words uh, for, for yourself. So just bear with me while I, while I get it up here. Amen. Amen. Do you need a touch today? You know, touch is one of the most basic needs we all have. In just a moment, we're going to have communion. And in this holy mystery... Jesus is here, and he is here in a way that you can touch. You can touch and you can know the healing power that comes in the presence of Jesus. So as we come today, as you come to communion, I want to invite you to come and bring whatever thing that is weighing on your heart that you need a healing touch today, and come and give that to Jesus and know his touch today. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.